Hello, my name is Kim and I'm the Youth Services Coordinator for the Newcastle Branch Library. I'd like to talk to you just briefly about the video that you will be watching today. So for the second year in a row, Garfield County Libraries was very fortunate to receive the Growing Readers Together grant. And that grant is provided by the Colorado State Library and the Buell Grant Foundation. And the grant allowed us to provide family, friend, and neighbor caregivers with uh, quality programming and resources focused on early literacy. With the help of Growing Readers Together, we've been working with the FFNN caregivers in our communities to um, build their skills, their confidence, and also to give them resources to engage the children in their care with um, early literacy materials and activities. So we were able to do this in the past at our library branches through what we call our make and take workshops. But due to the closure of the libraries um, because of COVID-19, we have decided to try something a little bit different. So in the video that you're about to watch, a youth services coordinator from each branch of our library will present on a specific early literacy practice. So they'll define the practice to you and then they will give you loads of wonderful ideas, tips and tricks of things that you can be doing at home with the children in your care to help them build their reading and comprehension skills. So these are the same early literacy practices that we use to develop our story times each week. And they are reading, writing, talking, singing, and playing. So as you can see, they're a lot of fun and they're also really easy. So we hope that the videos are very helpful to you. Um, we look forward to providing more virtual resources to you in the future. So please watch our Facebook page and also our website for um, any upcoming events that we will have. Um, thank you so much and I hope you have a wonderful day. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Amy Wright and I work at the Rifle Branch Library, which is a part of the Garfield County Public Library District. And I'm here today to talk to you about early literacy. Um, there are five practices uh, that you as parents can practice with your children that will help their early literacy. They are read, write, talk, sing, and play. And I'm here today to talk to you about the practice of read. Uh, first, I think it's important to define what early literacy actually means. So the definition of early literacy is what children know about reading and writing before they actually read and write. So how does reading to your child help support their early literacy? Well, reading with your child is probably the single most important activity uh, that can help build the knowledge that is required for their eventual success in reading and literacy. And reading together with your child will help to increase their vocabulary, which is an important way to help them get ready to read. Uh, when you're reading and learning the letter names, the shapes, the sounds are all building blocks for your child being able to sound out words on a page. And reading books and looking at letters on the pages is how you can help your child learn to make the connection that letters put together become words. Uh, children who spend time with books gradually learn the book basics that will allow them to jump right into reading once they are in school, which is what we're looking for. So I have some ideas and suggestions to help you build and encourage your child's early literacy through reading. First and foremost, I think probably the most important one is Try your best to read to your child every single day if you can. And another thing which I think is really important is let your children see you reading for pleasure. When they see you sitting down and reading, it just makes it all the more interesting to them. So try to find time to make reading a priority for yourself. When you're reading stories to your children, uh, use different voices for the different characters in the book. This really does make a difference, and you will see your child become more engaged in the story almost immediately. 
And it's good to use expression and convey emotion when reading. I thought I'd give you an example of what that might look like. So this book here, Grumpy Bird by Jeremy Tankard. Oh my goodness, it's a book about such a grumpy bird. So here's an example using emotion and voices. When Bird woke up, oh, he was grumpy. Oh my goodness, he was too grumpy to eat. He was too grumpy to play. In fact, he was too grumpy to fly. Hmm, looks like I'm walking today, said Bird. So you can see, uh, using emotion in the reading, using a voice for the character, definitely makes the story more interesting. And this is your child, so you don't have to be embarrassed. They're going to love it if you do that. Another thing which can be helpful is to make reading interactive. For example, you can look at the cover before you begin reading the book, you know, and ask a question like, hmm, what do you see on this cover? What, what do you think this book is about? Another thing that is funny to do is to, when you start reading, hold the book upside down. Okay, let's read a book and watch and see what your child's reaction is. While you're reading a story to your child, ask them questions about the story. Um, an example of that, there's an alligator under my bed by Mercer Meyer. You know, as you're reading the story, ask questions like, hmm, look at this. Why do you think he's putting food on the stairs? Oh, he's trying to lure out the alligator. I see. What do you see here? Hmm, what kind of food do you see? Oh, some corn. What's that? Oh, I see some carrots. What does this look like? A tomato? Mm -hmm, I think so. So asking questions as you're reading is a great one also. I've heard parents complain that their child wants to read the same story night after night after night, and they feel frustrated by that. Well, guess what? That is great. <laughs> repetition is awesome. You should encourage repetition. It's a good thing. And every time you read the same book, your child's going to get something new out of it. So no worries about that. Um, when you're reading a story, don't skip the hard words. You embrace them. Uh, a great idea to uh, incorporate is when you're reading a book and you come across a word that might be a bigger word or one that they've never heard before, pull out a dictionary and you can create a game called Let's Explore the Word. Uh, pull it out, look up the word, read what the definition is, and then go back to your story. That is a great way to help build their vocabulary. Um, read to your child everywhere you go. You can read road signs aloud as you're driving in the car. When you're in the grocery store, you can pick up the food and read the food packages. There are words everywhere. Words are all around us, so embrace that. So now here's some activities you can do to extend the reading experience when you're done reading a book to your child. You can get out some paper and some crayons and ask your child to draw a picture of the characters or something like that. Um, you can give them the book and ask them to retell the story in their own words. Maybe they're not reading yet, but they can certainly look at the pictures and tell a story about what's going on. And you could pull out some of their toys and they can enact the story in some way while they're playing. There's just a lot of fun things like that that you can do. So I hope that you find this information helpful. And I sure hope that you're ready to start incorporating some of these suggestions into your reading time with your child. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody, and have a great day. Hi everyone, I'm Miss Brittany from the Carbondale Branch Library and today I'm going to be talking to you about the early literacy skill writing. You may be wondering how um, writing can actually help build reading skills. Well, writing and reading go hand in hand. They are both ways to represent the spoken word. Writing goes through stages from light marks to forming shapes to forming letter-like forms and eventually to writing letters. Um, it helps children understand that print has meaning when they learn to write. When children scribble and then say what it means, they are understanding that what they have written or drawn means something.
the beginning of writing for very young children is learning how to use their hands and fingers. Um, the development of that is known as fine motor skills and building fine motor skills. Um, you may hear me talk about fine motor skills a lot during story times. Um, when I bring out paint or glue sticks, um, it's not just because I love messes, it has a purpose. Um, it's developing my fine motor skills that's essential to learning how to write. I'm going to talk about um, easy ways you can build those skills at home. Personally, I love using any sort of sensory activity for building writing skills because they're fun and messy. Um, it helps the kids connect that what they're creating uh, has meaning. So um, for one of my favorite activities, all you need is a baking sheet and a can of shaving cream. You can also use whipped cream, you can use rice, you can use sand, you can use anything that will just cover the bottom of the baking pan so that they can trace in it. So let's see what happens when I spray the shaving cream. Okay. So as you can see, I just filled the pan with shaving cream, not as messy as I would generally get because I'm at home and not at the library. So you kind of just fill the pan, so it looks like this and then they can either draw or write whatever they want to do. So let me spell cat now that I'm covered in shaving cream. So you can kind of see that says cat. Like I said, I'm very messy right now. So they're very, very young, earlier than one year old maybe. They would just be focusing on drawing anything they want, um, just pretty much playing around in it. You can model shaping letters by holding their hand. It's up to you. If they're a little older and actually starting to shape letters, what you could do is you could write the letter at the top of the baking sheet and then they could try and model the word underneath yours. Um, another way is if it doesn't work on mine because it's copper, but if you have a metal baking sheet, you could use alphabet magnets, spell words at the top in, al in the alphabet magnets, and then they trace the word and the shaving cream underneath that. Um, as you can see, a very messy but fun activity. Um, uh, if you don't have any of these supplies, not a problem. You can just use paper, um, crayons, colored pencils, anything you want. Um, some fun activities would have them draw a picture and then explain the picture to you. And as they're explaining it, you can write down some of the words they're saying. And that'll just help make that extra connection that what they're saying um, can be translated into the written word. Another fun thing would be have them draw animals and then you um, ask them what sound that animal makes and then write down the sound. Once again, what they're saying has meaning in the written form. Um, I hope this was a fun video for you and you learned some things. We hope to make more. If you have any suggestions, feel free to email us or write on our Facebook page. Um, it was fun talking to you today. Thanks. Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Sherrell from the Parachute Branch Library and I get to tell you about one of my favorite early literacy practices, talk. We all know that in order to communicate with one another, we have to be able to talk. But have you thought about this in connection to learning how to read? Well, language or verbal communication is one of the first steps to learning how to read. Talking with children is key to developing their oral language. Adults can be most effective when talking with children when they incorporate gestures, talk a lot, and use a wide variety of words. Parents who use a lot of gestures in communicating with their children will see the baby's language increase at a more rapid rate than those that don't. When parents translate their child's gestures into words, those words become part of the child's spoken vocabulary in a short amount of time. A great activity to do with a toddler is to have him draw a picture and tell you about it. It is important to really listen when he is describing it. When there is a break or he's done, you can do a few things to help improve communication. One. Rephrase some of the words or phrases if they may not have been quite correct grammar. For example, if the child says, we go on this spaceship to visit the moon, instead of jumping in and correcting, just rephrase the statement with interest. Oh, awesome. We went to the moon in this blue spaceship? Two, 
Ask open-ended questions. This can be so difficult, even if you think the child just told you everything you ever wanted or needed to know about this drawing. However, to ask something like, how do you feel when you were drawing this? Or why did you pick blue for your spaceship? Can really develop a child's communication skills instead of just hearing yes or no all the time. And three, strive for five. If you feel as though this type of communication is so hard, remember to strive for five back and forth points between you and the child. Ask a question, make a comment on something, or even tell you what the picture reminds you of. Anything that promotes a dialogue is great. Another activity you can do that can help expand a child's vocabulary is by walking around a part of the house that may be unfamiliar to the child, maybe the garage or the kitchen. Asking the child what they think a tool is used for can not only be entertaining, but he will also be able to learn some great vocabulary for the future. Hi, this is Mr. Paul, Youth Services Coordinator for the Silk Branch Library in the Garfield County Public Library District. And I'm going to explain why singing and music are important in the development of early literacy. I will also give you some tips on how you can use singing to help with your child's development. Music is powerful and can have a positive impact on early development. Singing can improve early literacy skills you can sing and recite nursery rhymes anytime and anywhere. Here's a fun fact. Research suggests that if a child knows eight nursery rhymes by heart by the time they are four, that they're usually among the best readers by the time they are eight years old. Singing promotes language development. So sing anywhere and everywhere. Singing and music involves the whole brain. If you are not a good singer, don't worry. Your child would love to hear your voice no matter what. Here are some early literacy tips on singing. First, sing to your child when doing everyday activities. Sing about the activity. You can sing while you're washing the dishes or putting away groceries. Maybe if you're changing their diaper, just sing and make it up. It's fun. Singing with your child is great brain development, and more importantly, it's an intimate activity that strengthens the bond between the two of you. You can use shaker eggs when reciting nursery rhymes. Each nursery rhyme has a great beat to it that children can follow using the shaker egg. When kids are losing attention, try singing a song with finger actions. One of my favorite things are freeze songs. Freeze songs are a great way for little guys to practice control. Yes, freeze songs are really exciting and often result in a lot of laughter, but they also teach kids to listen, focus, react, and control their bodies. Singing is a great way to bond with your child and build vocabulary. Sing fun songs together every day. Sing while changing your baby's diaper. You know, you've got a captive audience right there, and it helps squirmy babies settle down. Picking favorite familiar songs to sing while changing your baby's diaper, like the alphabet song or Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, or any other favorite, is an easy way um, and fun way to build their early literacy skills. Sing away. Like I said before, kids don't care what kind of voice you have, but it matters how much fun you're having. Playful lessons are remembered longer than others. You don't have to be musical to sing with your kids. They love to hear your voice and singing helps them learn new ideas and hear the smaller sounds that make up the words. Music encourages children to express themselves through movement and play. Physical play stimulates the part of the brain that regulates emotions. 
Overall, music plays a vital role in the growth and development of early childhood learners. Singing slows down the words so babies and toddlers can hear the words um, are made of different sounds. Music activities such as singing, dancing, and playing an instrument requires the children to listen attentively and hold patterns in their memory. This improves memory and attention. You could try to clap out, tap on a drum, or sing your name. So like Sydney or Alicia. Uh, this allows them to hear the words slow down so they can make out the parts of words or syllables. Find books that go with a song that can be sung to a familiar tune. Did you know Wiggle by Doreen Cronin can be sung to Do Your Ears Hang Low? Try it out. It might be kind of fun. Children don't care if you're a good singer. They love to, to hear you sing and they love to sing with you. Use finger plays and motions while singing to help engage the whole brain. Songs such as the itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Or, I like this one. Five little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Those are excellent for finger plays. You can always um, use the internet or YouTube as a resource, a resource to find music and movement songs. Some of my favorite groups and musicians um, for story time that I use in the library are The Learning Station, Jack Hartman, Lori Berkner, and The Wiggles. They all have catchy tunes and they have lots and lots of movement. So remember to sing with your child every day and have fun. Bye. Hi. I'm Miss Sheldon from the Glenwood Springs Branch Library. I'm here to talk to you about the early literacy practice of play. You might not realize that by playing with your child, you're helping them with their early literacy skills. And when we play with the ideas in books, we are helping to make a story a part of your child's life. By incorporating play with books, we, with the books we are reading, we are making the stories fun. Play helps children develop narrative skills when they make up a story about what they are doing. This helps them understand that stories can happen in an order, first, next, last. It helps them develop higher level thinking and language skills. It encourages them to use their imaginations to incorporate problem solving and to practice self-regulation. Play helps children symbolically a box becomes a spaceship, a playmate becomes an astronaut. While playing, children realize that one thing can stand for another. This helps them understand that written words stand for real objects and experiences. Even babies learn from playing. At this age, play is not about just toys. It's about back and forth interactions anything from singing a song during a diaper change to cooing and smiling back and forth, the baby will engage with repetitive movements to experience different sounds, sights, touch, and feelings. A great activity to do with your child is blowing bubbles. Blowing bubbles is great for developing visual tracking skills in small babies, hand-eye coordination in older babies, and for strengthening lips and mouths in toddlers to form word sounds, all of which will strengthen their reading and writing skills in later life. I bet you didn't know blowing bubbles could be so educational, plus they are cheap and fun. Here are some other ways to develop early literacy skills while playing with your child. Singing finger plays like Itsy Bitsy Spider, playing with Play-Doh, squishing bubbles and scribbling, all of these are great activities for children to prepare them for writing. You can use everyday things to make learning fun. Tissue boxes and paper towel rolls make great building materials. 
Jump the ABCs as a great way to hear all the letters of the alphabet. One jump for every letter of the alphabet, especially L, M, N, O, P, because they get smushed together. Encourage children to lead their own story times at home with their stuffed animals or family members as audience. Go outside, explore. The more you see and do together, together, the more your child learns.